Good evening and welcome to the Smart Entrepreneurship Decoded Show. Over the past many weeks, we have met people from all aspects and walks of life connected to entrepreneurship. We have met entrepreneurs themselves in the journey. We have met investors. We have met lawyers. Everybody. One of the common things you hear from people is that who mentors you and the kind of mentor you have can really make or break you. But getting a good mentor is so tough. I have often spoken about fake mentors, right? Midlife burnt out individuals who could not make it in the companies they worked for, walking around with their CVs and trading equity for mentorship. When you get mentors like that and give equity for free, virtually free, you show a certain business acumen that makes an investor nervous. And I have also often spoken about in life in general, not just entrepreneurship. It is not who advises you, but who you listen to that will create a better version of you or break you. Tonight, we are going to meet an interesting individual, somebody you should listen to. What kind of mentor should you have for your startup? Somebody who's seen the movie before. Somebody advising you should have a wide variety of experience, not having done, you know, 30 years experience of doing the same job day in and day out. That's one year experience, not 30 years experience. Somebody who's done diverse stuff from in different industries, done, done it hands on, succeeded and is well networked. Because that's what you want from a mentor, real world advice, real practical stuff, and somebody you respect for what they have achieved. Tonight, we have somebody like that, somebody who's run restaurants, somebody who's run hotels, somebody who's worked in media, somebody who's also done investment banking, somebody who's a mentor, guide, investor, and an author of two books. Please join me in wel welcoming Umesh Luthria from Mumbai. Welcome, Umesh. Uh, I'm sorry, Nalan. Uh, I think there's a technical issue. Uh, you are inaudible, completely inaudible to me. You can't hear me at all? I, I, I'm unable to hear you. OK, it was quite fine a short while ago. So let's try again. Can you hear me now? No. Should I log okay. out and log in again? Try that. I, I'll just come back. I'll just log out and log in again. Yeah. So while Umesh uh, logs off and logs back in, he's a very interesting personality. He wrote two books, you know, uh, one called 11 Gurus, one called Coffee Shots, and he's worked in such diverse areas. Uh, I had a very interesting meeting with him in between the two waves of the pandemic in Mumbai. Uh, uh, at, that, at, at that time, and uh, it was probably November when I met him in Mumbai in uh, Bombay Club. And uh, we had some very interesting conversations at that time. Umesh, are you here, able to hear us now? Yeah, yeah. OK, could you hear any part of the introduction? No, but I could rip, uh, lip, uh, what they say, uh, read your lips to a okay. certain extent. And, okay. and so I, I hope spoke, it was all flat, flat <laughs> I spoke at, uh, a little bit about your diverse background, uh, from right. media to hotels to restaurants to uh, private uh, banking, uh, investment banking, and what you do now. How did you get into all these areas as a young person? I'm sure this was not a planned career, right? No, How did you get all. into all this? So uh, when I was a kid, my ambition uh, was to be an engine driver so that I could travel around the country. Okay. And then uh, it switched to becoming a pilot again to travel around the world. And uh, somewhere along the line, uh, I wanted to join, out of patriotism, the Indian Air Force or the Indian Army or something. I mean, for me, in those days, I'm talking about the 
60s and 70s uh that is what used to be the kind of uh, ambition that young kids had that either you would end up as an engineer or a doctor or an account i, I think accountant was also a distant uh uh you know a uh, career which nobody thought of and uh, hotels uh, you had to be crazy to even think of hotels um so yeah it's not by it's not by my own design but design of let's say situations which came uh, throughout my life uh so uh, i i think we shared this over a pizza at uh, when we last met that we both are accountants by uh, education and neither you nor i uh, enjoy doing anything with accounting other than counting money i suppose uh, <laughs> uh, you know before before we went live you said something very interesting i asked you about the two books you've written right and right. you said before you write a book you should be a su successful investment banker so that people believe That's your right. lies now yeah i'm not lying to you <laughs> <laughs> so i'm going to take it a step further right what makes an a successful investor you yourself have turned around right you've seen both sides of it entrepreneurship and yeah. uh, investment yeah. so what makes a successful investor in your view in the indian indian context um in any context uh the fundamental of being an investor is being uh dealing to what you do uh i think emotions and investment don't go hand in hand mm -hmm. we fall in love with what we do and just like it plays out in real life if you get emotional about a particular subject you start bringing in your own personal prejudices and uh one keeps beating of of flogging a dead horse in the hope of a recovery when there is none so an investor is a is a person who can be detached more like a swami i would say is mm -hmm. that today the weather is good i will invest tomorrow the weather is bad i will get out of it unless you are a contrary contrarian swami who says today the weather is bad i will invest and today the weather is good i'm going to exit so once you get your approach right and uh, the detachment to what you are doing i think will make a fabulous investor anybody who wants to fall in love with their own project and their doings especially like an entrepreneur sometimes doesn't make it as a good investor mm -hmm. the good investor entrepreneurs are the ones who have not had trouble giving up their businesses and restarting all over again so uh, when it comes to entrepreneurs uh most of the failures are not because they have done something wrong it is admitting that they have done something wrong and uh or not correct in the situation that they are in and the inability to take a walk that's uh, that's a good point right many entrepreneurs get stuck in their companies for life without realizing that each stage of business requires a different kind of personality and different kind of skills Right. But when I was introducing you, I was talking about mentoring, uh, how entrepreneurs should be careful about fake mentors, people in their midlife who could not uh, make it in their own companies, walking around with CVs, trying to exchange equity for mentoring. But as an investor, is there a role of playing mentor and investor, or do you think that gets fuzzy? Ideally, if you look at it, I I mean, if you look at it. Uh, correctly mentoring is a as important a task but it's something which uh is assumed by the entrepreneur that it comes for free mentoring is not for free and if you want it it it's an old adage you throw peanuts you will attract monkeys okay and there are a lot of monkeys around who uh will jump in just for the sake yeah, of uh, there is a lot of that going around and you know i keep warning entrepreneurs against it but when you invest in a company uh do you also take on a role of a mentor even if it is paid um i generally uh would like to sit and see what's going on i okay. don't like passive investment okay. if 
the investment comes with a tag that you i love your money but i don't love you uh, i'm sorry i'm not there okay so that leads me to the a question like a prequel to that like i know you work a lot in deep tech uh, real estate and all that uh, among various other hats that you wear right when a complete Including stranger the one walks, i'm wearing <laughs> sorry <laughs> when a complete stranger walks up to you mm-hmm. and pitches what is it that you look for before deciding i want to talk further to this person or not 30 seconds that's all it takes to figure out whether the person sitting in me uh will have a conversation for the next 30 minutes or is just going to be uh, a polite waste of time it comes with body language it comes with how you start off uh how honest are your eyes in terms of what you have got um and i think the honesty is something which people find it very hard to disguise and uh yeah sometimes it's a case where the entrepreneur is uh, honest but he has a bad idea and there are times when you have a entrepreneur who has a damn good idea but you know uh he's going to take you to the cleaners so the first 30 seconds is reading people i think it's very important as an investor to read the intent of what the other person is coming to you for and uh, is he there to possibly make a monkey out of you uh or the guy seriously has good intent but doesn't have the experience or delivery uh to take it across good point you know i i think i was being charitable to people when i said 40 seconds you just cut it down to 30 seconds henceforth i'll advise people first 30 seconds <laughs> <laughs> because i am i am often trolled for saying 40 seconds if you have my attention you got it because people invest in people everything else comes later and uh, sure. you said it uh, more eloquently in different words that actually you are judging the person uh, from various in various ways that cannot be described in a textbook or in words right you look at that's a person true. and you sense and uh, from there it starts so that's a good point so now uh, in this pandemic time or whatever or the last one year or the over the next one year what sectors are exciting you what's coming on your table uh what's coming on my table uh i think i think uh, there's a lot of stuff going on honestly there's a lot of work being done and uh, uh digitization quote and code mm-hmm. is uh, a terminology being abused uh even a clothing manufacturer wants to digitize okay without understanding what digitization or being a digital brand stands for so they want to take a old school business and take it to mainstream as a digital business and for them digital means just going on the net and creating an e-commerce platform which already exists in so many different avatars so we keep telling them why on earth do you want to create all of this when it already exists what is the differentiation you're bringing to the table but uh, there is some very interesting work which is being done i mean i mean the kind of ideation that is happening right now nalan is fantastic especially in the world of ai especially in uh, e mobility sustainability and uh, you'll be surprised a lot of social entrepreneurship that is coming up and it's making a lot and lot of money it's hard work but it makes a lot of money and i'm pleased to hear that because in indonesia we teach ai across the country uh, to thousands and thousands of students so it's good that you know a lot of work is happening in that area yes and uh, i myself am doing a course on artificial intelligence at least the uh, uh, from a understanding point of view and uh, it sometimes skips us that artificial intelligence has been around uh not now but for yes. decades for decades and we have not seen it as such uh as artificial intelligence i mean starting with your simple calculator it was i i, I would say or uh, you know even if you take an abacus 
uh, anything which enhances a human's ability uh, to do work better, faster, more efficiently, is intelligence. Yes. And in a self-learning module, in a sense, you know, the timing is king, right? In a sense, the yeah. pandemic, along with computing power, along with data, the people giving value to data and collecting data, all of this has kind of come together like a perfect storm and given it that to Philip. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we're just giving the formality as though the, you know, it's like the prodigal son has returned and the son is now mature. He's got his university degree. So from our perspective, if you want a analogy, I would say that now the artificial intelligence we are dealing with is of a person who has graduated from uh, college. And now, you know, we say, wow, uh, the son is mature enough to do certain things, whereas uh, the son was always there and he was doing a lot of intelligent things in school and before that or whatever. But now the I, I must correct myself, son and daughter. <laughs> uh, I have a son and daughter so, too. So you know the, something you said caught my attention right away. You said you're doing a course on artificial intelligence, or at least one that'll that is at a basic awareness level and all that. Yeah. Now when we meet investors, when entrepreneurs meet investors, a lot of them are lazy investors, you know. Uh, right. Looking more, they come across more as money lenders than investors. Uh, how important is it for an investor to remain updated? I mean, what what kind yeah. of thing do you need to do? Very. And if you can't do it, get somebody else to invest for you. Uh, you need to be on top of your game uh, in order to understand what is being thrown at you. If you don't have that level of understanding, uh, and then you know. Uh, Many a times I've seen people try to do something in order to show one-upmanship. Mm -hmm. Remember the guy who's sitting in front of you bringing a set of technology. I mean, as I said, let me go back to that example of uh, the EV or the e-mobility platform that I was just evaluating. Mm -hmm. I was sitting across, uh, you can actually call them rocket scientists. One was a PhD and... Uh, automotive engineering, uh, another one in aerospace and uh, a third one in computing. You know, you cannot match up to the kind of intelligence that is in front of you. All that you're doing is making sure that you with your own learning and the basics that you have learned about it can ask certain intelligent questions and you actually reinforce your learning from them. There's a lot which you can take away from the conversation, if not uh, an investable idea, at least they will make you aware of what is going on in the industry. And that, to me, is very, very important. Talking to people, understanding from people, and keeping your mouth shut uh, when it comes to listening to what the other guys have to say. I think many a times we love our own voice. Uh, and we try to make the other person know that I know more than you, so don't try to make a monkey out of me. I keep going back to monkeys because that's what we were in the initial. <laughs> uh, but but that's part of learning. You have to sit across as an uh, you know unintelligent monkey being taught. Interesting you say that because the, I have a similar belief that uh, one, investors invest in people. They first judge you whether, whether they can trust you with their money. Then the absolute one thing they're looking forward for that in your area, your industry, your product, you are way smarter than me. I'll help you with the network. Yeah. I can help you with the money, but work you have to do. Uh, That's correct. At least in that aspect, I expect you to be way ahead. Uh, if I find, if I can name five companies like yours, which you don't know about, I re immediately write you off. That's right. So knowledge is absolutely paramount, uh, which brings me to, to a, a related uh, next step you know now angel investors typically get hundreds of proposals statistics show they pick up one out of 40 that's the average right. what do you absolutely dislike about entrepreneurs when it comes to pitching dislike yeah what puts you off and you say 
forget the trust aspect that you've gone past the trust aspect you pick up the pitch take you start talking and then you decide no nope, i'm not doing this um i i think i've come to a point where <clears throat> i it's not more about dislike uh it is being put off by certain uh, attitudes mm -hmm. uh in terms of a conversation in terms of uh uh i mean i mean there's nothing really uh, which tells me that i should dislike a person in the first go because sometimes uh, it's just like what you say that don't judge a book by the cover sometimes we miss out on good opportunities because of the prejudices sure uh, and that's a flaw that we carry i mean i know of several uh examples of uh, an entrepreneur's idea being uh, pushed off by an investor only for them to realize later that that investor's idea was picked up by somebody else sorry the entrepreneur's idea was picked up by somebody else and it has gone to become uh, a unicorn or some other animal uh, which you then say shit it came to be first and i pushed it off so uh, yes you do apply your own filters and sometimes your filters are too strong uh and you lose uh, a good investment opportunity but dislike i don't think uh, no in terms of dislike. not not dislike maybe that's a harsh word but in terms of uh, you said certain attitudes put you off right certain uh, certain traits or certain words what what give me a few of those uh, to guide people who watch this show okay over cockiness in front of an investor is a definite put off uh trying to you know make the other person believe that i know it all and you are not capable of that person may not know as much as you in what you do but that person still controls the money so i'll take you back to my college days uh i used to i studied my uh, business admin in uh, at iit chicago okay uh and uh, the reason for doing it was because i had this uh, uh terrible ambition to join the iits in india and for some reason i couldn't uh, join it over here so i said iit to iit hai na so i joined iit chicago and my debate used to be constantly with technologists with engineers and they used to keep uh, thinking of business students as the lowest uh, on the lowest rung of the ladder and they say what do you guys do you just uh, pencil uh, and paper pushers i said yeah at the end of the day your idea comes to us and we decide your future so you know i said be nice to me or some day you will meet uh, a low rung uh, idiot uh, who will decide that your brilliant idea doesn't deserve a single dollar and uh, you know you'll be left with uh, frustrated so do you cockiness to me is uh, or over zealousness in terms of selling is mm -hmm. a definite put off uh, you need to show your confidence but not to the point where you are uh, pissing off people if you want to put it that way okay those are definitely things uh, to watch out for but uh, mm -hmm. in your experience you know when it comes to uh, investments uh do you advise investors the angel investors individuals to uh, come in groups or uh, individually how how does it work for you oh so you're asking whether you want to be a lone wolf or a herd yeah. uh uh it, both have worked nalan honestly uh, both have worked in some way or the other there is uh, um it, it's a question of risk uh, I, i mean from an investor point of view uh, there's one thing which is called talking point so mm -hmm. again i've heard this at a lot of these uh, uh investor clubs you may want to call it oh okay. we have invested in about 30 uh, startups it could just be a fraction of a lakh if not a lakh but you go around talking again with that boast like you have uh, invested significant sums of money uh 
in the uh, investment i mean in the startup ecosystem which is not true yes you will get into a situation where there is no risk but then the reward also is very very low uh, i generally don't see many investors in that category having made a lot of money uh angel investment i think has to change uh it has to be a double up on uh, the friends and family round according to me if an angel investor cannot match up what an entrepreneur has collected in the fnf round uh i don't think that person should uh be looking at investing because uh uh there's nothing in the uh, on on the game plate you know to take home and say this is my trophy true true uh, so very true now the uh, just shifting uh topic a little bit sure. i know you work do a lot of work in the real estate uh, area as well at least you keep a keen eye on that what's happening in that sector because the stock market is ready to give that sector huge premiums once again has it picked up are the reits functioning what's happening in that sector there are very few reits or uh, reits uh, and invest uh, goes uh, existing as of now okay my only fear with uh, this uh, new financial product, if you may want to call it a hybrid product is that uh, you know if it becomes the flavor of the month idea you'll have a lot of silly reits being floated mm-hmm. which will not give returns which will then go into eroding uh, the good part is that reits have been around for the last 8 or 10 years and uh, the only reason sebi had not opened the door to the small investor is because they wanted to test out how does it work uh on a real case basis and uh the best part is that with very mature investors coming into the uh arena so you have got the likes of blackstones the brookfields uh the zanders uh you know the capital lines ascendas these are all serious players from overseas who are acquiring a lot of indian real estate they have the learnings of how to run up read they do evaluate and i know i'm working with a few of them the kind of meticulous uh, rigor they put a project for acquisition through uh, mm-hmm. it is it is meant to make sure that the investor who puts money in them uh, gets the fair share that has been committed true sure. if that trend continues i think uh, the real estate industry is in for a big seller in fact uh, i was speaking to a fund manager a few days back and this guy is purely into private equity mm-hmm. and his mantra was uh, you know you always have these rising uh, stars or, or the eclipse stars uh with the coming of reits this is going to become this industry at least is going to become more and more institutionalized and uh, at the end of the day you're going to see it uh, uh rise up like a hockey curve okay do you see any the major activity i know sebi is working on the rules but in the spac space spacs coming up in india special purpose vehicles yeah so um spacs were again the flavor of the season back in 2005 2006 a lot of spacs especially in the real estate market had listed themselves on the singapore and uh, more on the london stock exchange on the uh, aims market alternative investment market yes i think uh, uh it's still a bit nascent for this uh, country uh because uh, everything that we have done in real estate is a spac uh you just have a piece of paper i mean real estate is a classic example of a spac is that you sometimes don't even own the land you just put up a project board and because you develop you know believe in the developer you had been putting money uh, on the table only to realize that uh, there was nothing there there was no due diligence done by the uh, investor per se so that i think will change over a period of time and uh, uh 
I'm quite confident that uh, the regulator will come up with uh, a decent set of laws because there is enough experience now to back themselves up. Sure. So we're coming to the end of our time. Uh, I'll take one final question for you. Now, I know you have had a, a very diverse career. Uh, I know you are very passionate about a lot of things, including fitness, mental health, and investments, etc. What keeps you going? What next? What's keeping you excited? Um, good question. <laughs> what keeps me going is belief in your own self. To, to answer yourself on a daily basis, not to answer anybody else. It is, what did I do today to make myself proud? What did I do today to give me joy? What did I do today to make me feel that I'm a better human than I was yesterday? So one, one final supplemental question, though I said it's the last one, you intrigued me. So how, how in, do, do you think entrepreneurs underestimate the uh, importance of uh, or the drain, emotional drain of the journey mentally when, when they enter entrepreneurship, do they underestimate the, what it will take away from them mentally? 100%. 100%. They don't know what they are signing up for. And uh, many of them get sucked in and uh, <laughs> uh, that's the end of them. I found it very interesting, you know, uh, you will be able to relate to it, that from a time when the entrepreneurship was virtually unheard of, right? It was Then it became fashionable to a point where it's an obsession and f people think funding is a social uh, badge of honor. Uh, it, it is a birthright. Without funding, a startup cannot start. And I, and I keep meeting entrepreneurs and I realize that more than half of them need advice, not money. They can very I, well. I 100% endorse you on that, that most entrepreneurs, uh, I think they should go back and look at their fathers and forefathers. Uh, India was a uh, entrepreneurship back in 1947. Yes. Okay, with the uh, socialism of Nehru and the Khadiism of Gandhi, uh, India was all about entrepreneurship. Where it changed, we don't know. But uh, we are a land of entrepreneurs. <clears throat> and those entrepreneurs knew that the only uh, entity they could rely on was I, me, myself. True. Umesh, it's been an absolute pleasure having you here your thoughts, your ideas. Uh, you are the kind of strategic investor and mentor every startup uh, could dream of because you bring the right combination of seeing life from a clo clo with a closed lens through various industries, having done it yourself, as well as you know a great network that an entrepreneur gets. Thank you very much. All the best and have a great night. You too, Nalan, and first pleasure being on your show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.